My Lolo was never one to keep things neat. He always had things lying around the house, like dishes, newspapers, his dentures, you name it. It never bothered me though, because he always knew how to make me smile. When I was little, he used to make up all these crazy stories just to make me laugh. He was a corny and sappy, but passionate man. Always very, very lively. That part of him seemed to fade away though when my grandma passed away a while ago. I didn't know much about her. She developed dementia when I was really young. Grandpa never talked much about her either. Lorenzo Navarro, age 91, born September 6, 1920, died May 28, 2011. It's been about six months since he died. Up till now, I didn't realize just how much I missed him. I guess I was just kind of numb to things for a while. But now, being in his room and packing away all his possessions, well, I miss him. I miss him a lot. This must be Grandpa's. October 28th, 1938. I never understood what life was until now. Tala. Tala, Tala, Tala. Her name is music to my ears. She is the woman of my dreams. Whoa! What the hell? That is not Grandma. Her name was Malaya. Tala sounds nothing like Malaya. Tala? Who's, who's Tala? Lola was in love with someone before Grandma? I don't hear any cleaning happening in there. What is cleaning supposed to sound like, Mom? I so see it. You want me to take away your phone? Ugh. All right, I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning. Guess I'll read you later. October 28th, 1938. I never understood what life was until now. Tala. Tala, Tala, Tala. Her name is music to my ears. She is the woman of my dreams. She frees my soul and eases my pain in these times of struggle. She is my light, my shining star. To think, it has only been a month since I met her. It is still clear in my mind. That fateful day, when I was so distracted by her radiant beauty, that I fell off my bicycle. I felt no pain, only a heavy pounding in my chest, and what felt like the beginnings of something without end. So corny. I don't think I've ever f gotten the dial. Coming! I actually have a test next period. I was just gonna go to the library and oh. study. Oh my um, god, you're so Asian. Tomorrow? Let's let's tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's All right, I'll see you later. later.
October 30, 1938, Tala is my sunshine. Short sweep. Number 12, Tala is so beautiful when she plays sports, a brown Athena of sorts. Um, December 3, Talisman's dancer, I know. She's as graceful as a gazelle. Lolo, why? That's creative. It's all the good stuff. October 28th, Ooh. 1939. Today was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. How could things turn from so sweet to bitter so soon? The day started off quite well. We were taking a walk in the park and got to talking the way we always do. Then, she said it. She said she had to go back because her aunt had given birth and her ill mother's condition had worsened and no one was there to take care of her. Didn't she see, though? <sighs> My love is a fool. God, if you go, if you do that, you'll... you won't come back. You'll never be able to come back. They won't let you back. You'll never be able to return. Don't you understand? We won't... We can't be... We can't. Do you honestly think that I want to go back? Do you think I want to leave you? know when she's leaving. She didn't say. I did not think things would end like this. I don't know when or if I'll ever see her again, but I feel as though my heart has been torn to shreds. As she leaves, I slowly die. In returning to that country bereft of opportunity, she takes my soul, my heart, and my life too. To die, my world is full of shadow and darkness, and life has lost its purpose. There is no color, there is no life, there is no love. There is no light without Tala. The stars in the night sky have lost their shine. Tala, 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 oh my. T Grandpa, you are so emo. January 5, 1942. I'm going to do this. My mind is made up. Last page. What? Dude, where are you? The test is gonna begin in like five minutes. Wait, are you serious? Uh, I'll be there in a second. Bye. Hey, Dad. Mm. How was school? Uh, good. Um, Did you eat lunch? Yeah, yeah. Um, Are you studying hard? Yes, of course. Um, good. You... Good. Good. Do you so... have lots of homeworks? Uh, yeah, actually, um, in uh, our American history class, we're studying Filipino-American history. Um, <gasps> that's, that's 
one of my favorites. When I was in college, uh, I almost got a perfect score. Ask me anything. I, I probably know more than your teacher, huh? Uh, okay. Um, so, what do you know about what Filipinos living in America were going through around, say, the late 1930s? Well, so many things were happening during that time. Uh, so, uh, well, per, uh, first of all, I, I think it's important to remember that, you know, uh, during that time, the U.S. still had in possession the Philippines. So, Filipinos were allowed in and out of the country without uh, the passports. They were really only coming here, immigrating here for work. And when the, uh, what is that, the, uh, when the Great Depression occurred, uh, the whites, they did not like us Filipinos because uh, we were working for very cheap labor. And then uh, in, um, in March uh, 24, uh, 1934, uh, the, uh, what is that called, the, yeah, uh, what is that called, the, uh, uh, the Tidings of McDuffie Act. Yeah, I recognize that day from class. I just didn't... Uh, uh, because you're not doing your homeworks, huh? Oh. Uh, yes, that's the one. Well, uh, basically it's saying that for, uh, for 10 years, the Philippines was allowed to govern itself. But... Oh, and there were many, many articles, but the most important clause was the one that uh, reclassified uh, Filipinos as aliens and this mean this meant that Filipinos were no longer allowed to work in America legally because isn't that so unfair huh and only only a certain number of immigrants were allowed in America each year so you know that you know this um, this led to that um, to the uh, what is that, oh, what is that called? the Oh, oh, the uh, the Filipino Repatriation Act of 1935. Repatriation? Yes, uh, repatriation. Uh, okay, so... Re repatriation Act, Oh, um, Repatriation Act. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, that's what I said. Oh, okay, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, uh, oh, so yeah. Uh, so the U.S. made this Refatriation Act to bribe Filipinos to uh, to return to the Philippines by giving them a free one-way rides home. But if they leave America, they then had to follow the the quota system if they wanted to return but only 50 were allowed yearly and you know so many people want to go to America and so you're very lucky if you get in but you know but anyways so my favorite era to study is the uh, the Marcos era because my, my teacher, so that's know, why he was so upset about her leaving, about, saying things uh, about using sister, their so money. The name is, uh, he meant the money the Repatriation Ayala Act gave Filipinos and, to go and home and stay home. And, festival, and the chances were obviously were really slim it. that Tala would ever be able to return dancing. again. You know that dance, the Jovencita? <sighs> it's got those girls with the dresses and, you know, they're doing that, that move with their hands. You know, it's like, um, it's like, uh, it's like that, you know? You know that dance? You think you danced it once, right? It's like, it's like, it's like, uh... Um, thanks, Dad. Uh, 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 no? January 20th, 1942. My dear Lorenzo, I'm telling you this out of love. You're being completely and utterly foolish. Please don't go to war, I'm begging you. Ever since my mother died, you, the memory of you, of us, 
has been the only thing keeping me alive. If you die, I can't go on. Please be safe. All my love, Tala. February 13th, 1942. My dear Lorenzo, I suppose I cannot help the fact that you're as stubborn as a mule. I don't agree with your decision, but what more can I do? My prayers are with you. As for myself, I'm doing all right here. My tita has been pestering me about certain things. Lately, my auntie has been sending many suitors my way. Do you remember Carlos, the friend of your tita Joy? You mean, the guy with the oily hair? Yeah, why? I don't say that, you know, he's a very nice man, very smart. I guess. He's studying to become an engineer. Hmm, at Ateneo, diba? Oh, oh, very promising future, that one. You know, I invited them over for dinner tonight. You two should really get to know each Ay, other better. Ay, Tita, what are you trying to do now, hmm? You're already 20 years old. You need to start thinking about a family. That's not important right now. I was actually thinking about going to nursing school. No, it's that Lorenzo boy, isn't it? Do you think he can give you what Carlos can give you? Huh? From America? Do you think- Please, please, Tita, stop. You don't even know him. Enough. I'm thinking about your future. What will become of you? What do you think will happen? That America will open its gates to us? We may not even be alive when that happens. Mark my words, you will never see Lorenzo again. Anak, I know you love him. I know. Masakit yung puso mo. Alam ko, pero life goes on. Subukin mo si Carlos. Walang mawawala sa'yo, di ba? So how's school? It's been good. I've been doing discrete structures and algorithms recently. Wow, very smart, huh? Thank you, thank you. Actually, I've been doing a project with my professor. We're actually writing... Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Um... July 7th, 1942. My dearest Lorenzo, there is no easy way to say this, so I'll just be out with it. I am due to be wed in three months' time. I would have rather said this to you in person, but where you are, how you are, and what you are doing now is lost on me. Nothing, darling. Nothing. I wish you well in all that you decide to do. Goodbye, Lorenzo. Know that my prayers are with you. Yours truly, Tala. P.S. I've meant every word I've ever said to you and always will. Till the day my heart stops beating. Hey, uh, Ma. Hmm? Um, did Lola ever tell you about his life before he met Grandma? Um, I mean, did he ever mention being madly in love with another girl before meeting Grandma? What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> when I was cleaning out his room the other day, I found this journal that he kept before he um, joined the army. And literally all of it is about this girl named Tala. <laughs> I mean, he was unbelievably crazy about this girl. It was to the point where he said things about her that made me want to barf and, and cry and go all at the same time. I mean, he always talked about how she was the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen and how he couldn't live without her and stuff like that. But then, um, 
she ended up going back to the Philippines. And I found letters from Tala dating back to the early 1940s. I just, I mean, did Lola ever know about this? Cause, jeez. <laughs> I was her and I knew about this. <laughs> well, a tough act to follow. <laughs> I mean, don't be so just now a theme color, right? Like, where am I going? I'll be right back and stop eating those pretzels to spoil your dinner. It's true. Your Lola was very much in love with a woman named Tala. And after that last letter Tala sent him, telling him that she had to get married to someone else, something inside of him just changed. He said it was like a million stars exploding all at the same time. Your grandfather knew what he had to do. And Though it was very foolish, he would do anything to see his Tala again. So he fought in the war recklessly. And during an attack from the Japanese, he was shot in the leg. He was trying to pull his friend from the battlefield and he was unable to walk after that, so he was honorably discharged, and he made his way back to Manila and went straight to the address where all the letters were from. He walked as fast as he could, and he just knocked on that door, and there she was, his Tala. Um, wait, so... Lolo did find Tala. What about Carlos? What about Grandma? You couldn't marry Carlos on the day of the wedding. She had to tell him her heart belonged to another. Oh! Oh! I still don't get it. Tala was your grandmother. Shut up! I mean, no way! Wow, what did the... Uh, why do you call her Tala all the time? I mean, that well, is... Well, in Filipino legend, Tala was the goddess of the stars. Ah, hence all the star metaphors. <laughs> wow, she was beautiful. Jesus, I can't, still can't believe Tala was... How did they, um, how did they end up getting back to the U.S.? Well, in 1945, the War Brides Act was passed, which meant Filipino soldiers who were granted American citizenship after the war were able to bring their wives, who weren't citizens, back to the U.S. So then after they got married, they moved back to the U.S. They bought a new house and they started anew. When we were growing up, your Tito Ray and I would always ask your Lolo to tell us the story. And every time he would say, My world was dark until I met my Tala. He eventually had to stop calling your Lola Tala because of her dementia. The doctor said it was too confusing for her. That's a beautiful story, isn't it? I wish mine was that exciting. I met your father at the dentist. My Lola never told me his story. Looking back, I suppose I know why. I guess it hurt. It hurt to call to mind how he loved Lola with every single piece of himself when she was already gone. But I know he meant for me to find this. Lorenzo Navarro, age 91, born September 6, 1920, 
died May 28, 2011. Now he's where he should be, next to his brightest, shining star. Ang buhay ng ate 